Coming up today on the story. I never broken a bone in my in my life. You know, I never had a cast or nothing on, and and for that to happen to me, you know, it's like I broke all the bones in my body and did all my internal organs all at one time. But you know, um, coming around that corner, hitting that metal guardrail, and wrapping my body around that changed my life upside down. Having that motorcycle accident. The story. G'day, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story. Well, yesterday we heard former bouncer Steve Beazel share his story and he mentioned meeting a young man by the name of Joel Tawita, where they both worked. Today we'll find out Joel's story and how a few years ago he was in a horrific motorcycle accident. His heart stopped twice and he had to be revived. Miraculously, he survived and has gone on to make hip-hop music for the Lord and continue his involvement in ministry. Joel Tawita is sharing his incredible journey with Eric Scadamo. Joel Tawita, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Eric. Glad to have you with us, and you're joining us from the studios there in Brisbane. Yes. Glad to have you on the program to tell your story. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Tell us yeah. about your childhood, some of the experiences you had that really shaped your life. Yeah, well, uh, for me, I first grew up in a, uh, a Christian home. You know, my mom and dad were um, believers of Christ and um, the Pacific Islanders and, and, you know, living here in Australia. And, um, you know, they, they ended up starting a church and um, becoming pastors of a church called Ark of God in Sydney. And, um, you know, for us, that was that was the lifestyle that we were living in. And, and um, you know, things were great. And when I was... Uh, 11 years old my my parents um broke up and uh, our church fell apart and mm. and as a young christian kid that was growing up in church never really exposed to um you know worldly music or worldly movies uh i was i was exposed to this big bad world that um i wanted to try everything and and that's what i did I, you know i was hurt because of what happened with my my parents and um yeah i was going to ask you that must have yeah. been really a hard adjustment and rocked your world because you know all you knew was being in the church that's right and then all of a sudden that all disappeared when your parents marriage split up yeah so that that really rocked us um hard because um as 11 year old you know you you just you you just think everything's fine you know growing up you know your your parents um, provide for you a roof over your head and Everything's sweet, and you got your brothers and sisters there with you, and all of a sudden um, you're being pulled into an office and and um, told uh, to choose between your mum and your dad. Oh wow! And um, you know, being the last one to pick as well was really hard to, to be in that situation, yeah. and and um, you know, so that that really um, that broke my heart, you know, and it broke m- my brother and my sister's heart as well, and. and you know, we it's like we had to be born again into, you know, a world that was completely different than than what happened before. And um, you know, it took it took a lot of time to heal, but at the same time, that also made me grow up really quick mm-hmm. um, because of of going out to that world and and trying things like drugs and alcohol and get involved in in gangs and and um, doing the wrong things. And and I guess um, so. Had you, know, you been a Christian? Had you put your faith in Jesus when you were raised in the church? Yeah, well, you know, as a as a, a, a pastor's kid, you, you definitely, for one, they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, you know, just because you're a pastor's kid doesn't mean that you're a good kid. Uh, uh, but for me, I knew about the works of God. I knew about going to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. I knew about going to music practice, going to all the prayer meetings and serving God, but I didn't know God mm. intimately. I didn't know him and have an actual relationship with him. And, you know, that that for me was um was something that I didn't find until late you know, until, you know, just a few years ago. So just because you're in a church and just because you're you you know, you you dress well doesn't mean that you are well. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that you you know God. It sounds like you knew how to play the role. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And act it out. <laughs> Yeah. But and, you didn't you know, know God personally. No, not at all. So you didn't um, have that solid foundation for when your whole world got rocked that your relationship with God would continue. Is, is that a, a fair assessment? Well, we always prayed to God. So mm-hmm. that was that was always a, a, a custom to, to pray to God when when we were going through things that were, were, were tough and, and going through things that were bad. But at the same time, 
I didn't know God. You know, I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't, I just went to him when I needed stuff. You know, I didn't know that he needed me or or he wanted me to have a relationship with him. And, um, you know, I was hurt and I was a kid in this big world and and I tried everything. You know, by by that New Year's Eve when I was 11 years old, um, my mom had to send out my uncles to look for me in Sydney because I was out drinking and partying. And doing oh, all wow. of this crazy stuff. I was stoned off my head. I, I remember it. And, um, you know, like for me, it was a complete turnaround from, you know, being in church and, and going to church every Sunday and, and doing the right things. And only a few months later, being out there drunk. And, and I was with gangbangers. You know, I was with a gang in Sydney. And wow. that's who I was getting smashed up with, you know. So by that time, I, I just, I just flipped, everything flipped upside down and, and I went um, so far the wrong way, and, and, and I kept running that way. You know, I was trying to, um, I just wanted approval. I think that's what yeah. I really wanted. I, I wanted that love again. I wanted my family back. And, yeah. and because it wasn't there in my, my actual family, I was looking for it in a family in the world. And, and you know, I kept on, on, on trying to chase that down. And, you know, that just put me in a, a, a state of, of hurt and, and mm. pain and, and trying to, to be somebody I wasn't. And and you, you know? mentioned that you had to make a decision between your mother and your father. Is that right? Yeah. And um, I was, um, it was really hard because my brother uh, went first and he chose my mom. My sister went second. She chose my mom. And um, me being the last one was looking at my dad and, um, and I felt sorry for him. So I went with him. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that... For my brother and sister, we, we were always together every single day. It was the tightest, you know. Um, I, I'm just thinking. Ever. I'm just thinking. What a terrible decision for an 11 year old to have to make. Yeah, that was the hardest thing to do. You know, mm-hmm. definitely yeah. was the hardest thing to do. But at the same time, that was something that really cut me deep. You mm-hmm. know, <laughs> that wound um, took a lot of years to heal. A very long time to heal. So you, as you mentioned, you had a, a wound, and then. You also mentioned your life kind of went downhill into being with gangs and, and drugs. Yeah. But eventually, fast forwarding, you met somebody named Steve Beazel at the place <laughs> where you worked. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Steve, um, before then, you know, um, just touching quickly on it, um, my life was crazy. Like, I was, I was always trying to, you know, be somebody I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I was bouncing and, and, um, you know, working for drug dealers on the side and and eventually things like kind of hit rock bottom and I knew that none of those friends that were around me were my true friends. So yeah. I had to I had to make a decision and, and, and a, a choice to, to change my life. And that's what I did. I, I ended up, um, I got a job with um, a company called Secure Corp and, and just worked my way from bottom all the way to the top and um, I cut off all the, the old lifestyle um, that I was involved in, and mm-hmm. and um, when I got to the top, uh, Steve took a manager's position where he came and worked with me. And um, I remember my first day, I, I seen him, and we was in the lift, and um, I seen a, a bracelet with, which had a, a cross on it. And um, Steve's not a, a small guy; he's like six six, and you know, at the time it was one hundred and twenty kilos. So yeah, he was he was a big boy, and. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, like seeing that, I just said to him, you know, what's that mean to you? You know, who are you? You know, and um, he he said, you know, I'm a Christian, and you know, and I said, yeah, I know your type, you know, and um, and you know, I didn't like Christians. I didn't like. Um, uh, Is that because of your past in the church well, and all that? Well, well, what happened to me when I was 16? I tried to go back to church, and oh, yeah. Um, yeah, when I went back to church, I was smoking, I was drinking, I was doing some bad things, and. And I got condemned um, for for doing those things, and and um, I was told to hide that stuff. And then uh, we got like we've been evicted many times from home, and and one time we got evicted again from home, and we were kicked out onto the streets. I had nowhere to go, nothing um, to eat or anything. And um, you know, I turned to my church family and pretty much got the door slammed shut on my face. So. You know, that, that put me in a state where stuff, everybody in church and mm-hmm. stuff, all of these Christians that, you know, saying they're doing good, but they're not, you know, mm-hmm. and um, that put me in a state of hurt and, and you know, really crushed me again. And, and especially trying to come back to church and having to happen, 
And then when I seen Steve, I, I said the same thing to him, you know, like, okay, you're Christian. I understand that. I believe there is a God, but you keep your stuff to yourself. And mm. um, he said to me one thing that just planted a seed so deep, and he said it wasn't about religion or you know the list of do's and don'ts or or having rules and regulations but it was about having a relationship with god and that was the thing that made me think in my head Hmm. i've never ever had a relationship with god now when i talked to steve recently on the phone he said that when he worked there and he met you god told him that's the reason why i'm here yeah he told me that on the first day, that same, not long after. The first after, day? Wow. Yeah. Not long after uh, speaking about that, we walked up to a loading dock, and that's where he said, well, maybe, you know, um, this is it. This is God bringing us together. How did that make you feel? Um, in my head, I was thinking, like, yeah, this guy's loopy, you know. But, <laughs> but um, you know, like, I didn't fight back. I just, you know, kind of went, okay, <laughs> you know, but... um. I think, yeah, that going back in time, going back to that, that moment was, um, you know, you can see God's hand upon my life. You can see how he sent a soldier on a mission to come and get me. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I'm so grateful to God for what he's doing, for, for never giving up for me, even when I gave up on him and myself and every other Christian. You know, he never gave up on me and he pursued that relationship with me. You're listening to The Story. Today, hip-hop singer and youth ministry worker Joel Tawita is sharing his incredible journey. We've just heard how he met his Christian friend Steve Beazle, who shared his story on yesterday's program. Next, we'll hear how Joel survived a horrific motorcycle accident and had a vision of Jesus after his heart stopped. That and more when we return. The Story. 